Hey Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Director Orson Krennic from Rogue One and I've got to say that is lovely to hear because it just seems like ages and ages that we've been waiting for Orson Krennic or Director Krennic to be in the Vintage Collection and finally it's here. Of course it's been made possible by the Piet Sculpt I think we call it now Piet was the first officer, Imperial officer, that we got in the line that used the new body and we've got loads of them since, which is great. We've got the Imperial 4-pack, we've got Thrawn, we've got Jajerod, uh, I might be missing one, and now we've got Director Orson Krennic and I've got to say this is my favourite so far. I've been waiting for this figure for so, so long. So good to have a Rogue One character back in the Vintage Collection. I hope they do more of them. There's still plenty that we still need, namely... Mr. Baze Malbus and Mr. Bodhi Rook. But Director Orson Krennic is a good start. The card pack is fantastic. I do like the image that they've chosen. I think I said in my overview video that it isn't the image that I would have chosen. And I was surprised that they went with this image, but he looks awesome there. He looks really, really good. And there is the figure in the bubble. Now I know a few people have said that because they've used a hard goods cape, they haven't used a soft goods cape, that, you know, just standing there, he, he kind of looks like the 5POA version. And, you know, I can't disagree with that. I really can't. But, you know, we know that this is a super articulated version and he's going to be awesome. So there he is in the bubble. What a great card with the blue behind the figure. Really makes that white uniform pop. On the back here, we have VC302 in the line. And once again, we've got a picture of the figure itself on the back with the card back vintage collection logo and a small write-up in multiple languages for the character. So really, really nice packaging. I think I mentioned in my Revan video that I, I'm i pretty sure that the card back, you know, the card stock that they're using is even thicker once again. It really does feel like it to me. And what's really good is that I've got no damage on here. We haven't got the ring of death on there or anything. And this one looks pretty good to me. So then let's open him up and check him out. All right, so here is the figure out of the packaging and I've just got him standing there very, very quickly. I will do a super close up look at the head sculpt to see how well they've done the likeness to uh, Ben Mandelson, which is the actor that played director Krennic. Um, we will do that in a second, but I just wanted to you know, have the figure standing there looking very Imperial officer-esque with his cape. Now, when they announced that director Krennic was going to be coming to the line, you know, my first thoughts did go to about how they were going to accomplish the, the cape, whether they were going to go soft goods or whether they're going to do a plastic cape. They've opted for the plastic cape. And I think the reason for that is, is because of the collar on the cape. Um, that's the only reason I can think of it. You know, it'd be quite difficult to get some material to actually stand up straight, as it were, on that collar. And although I'm a huge fan of cloth good capes, I can kind of see why they've gone down this route for this particular figure. Um, and this is where the problem is with the 5POA version. People are saying it looks exactly the same, but I can assure you the capes are different. Not that that makes too much difference anyway, but the capes are different. But let's take a look at him without the cape. Obviously, it's quite easy to take the cape off the figure. You know, at the end of the day, it just cocoons him like that. The cape is white. And it has the little split at the back there as well. But there's the figure without the cape. And, you know, just looking at this figure, I would absolutely love for them to do the sort of wet gear version of um, Krennic when he's in his like poncho at the beginning of the movie. That would be an awesome figure as well. You can see there he's got his blaster in his holster and it's facing outwards. And that's because he's left handed. So he uses his left hand to remove the blaster from the holster, which is a, a nice little detail. He has a canister there and there on both sides. And there you can see his rank badge as well. And I do love the way the paint apps are so well done on these rank badges. You know, there's no spillage of red or blue, no bleeding paint or anything. They are absolutely perfect. You can see he's got a nice silver buckle on his belt there. And he has the flared out trousers, which are black and the shiny black boots. Absolutely awesome. And now we're going to take a really good close up look at that head sculpt. Okay, then. So here is the head sculpt up close for you. So you can take a look at that and I think they've done a pretty good job with the likeness and you can see there that they've gone with the grey highlights on the side of his hair. It goes round to the back as well. I know that some people were saying when they saw this figure for the first time on the press images that they that he should have had like you know more grey in the hair but they've gone for like a brown 
and then the highlights of grey on the sides. I still think it looks pretty good, but the actual sculpting of the head looks great to me. I think the portrait is fantastic and the photo reel and everything. That looks like Krennic to me, so I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah, pretty awesome. In terms of the articulation, of course, this is the officer sculpt, so it's going to be pretty much the same as we've seen before. His head is on a barbell. You get loads of range of motion in there. We have the ball hinge shoulders. We have hinges at the elbows. We have hinges at the wrists. We have the lower torso there, which is on like a ball. So you've got loads of range of motion in there. And of course, it spins as well. We have the new style hips. I don't know why I keep saying new style. Most of the figures that we get now have those style hips. He has the split at the top of the thigh. We have the knee joint there hidden by his trousers and just at the boot, which is great. And we have the rocker ankle as well. Absolutely fantastic sculpt. I love the officer sculpt. I think it's brilliant. And I, you know, I could take more and more of these. There's so many officers that I would like them to do. Let's take a quick look at the blaster here. It's pretty much a gray piece of plastic, but it does have some paint apps on the handle and on the bottom of the pistol there. But I do like the sculpting work on the blaster. I mean, obviously it's tiny, but you know, it looks pretty good to me. But the unfortunate issue that we have, and even though that they knew that he was left-handed and they made a point out of him being left-handed, unfortunately, it's still the right hand that has been sculpted to hold a blaster with the trigger finger. This hand, although it does hold the blaster, it does sort of fall out quite easily. And although he does look like he's got a trigger finger there, it's not really. It's just like an open hand like that, really. Whereas that one, you can actually see that the finger is separated from the hand. So if we were to put the blaster into this hand, the trigger finger would actually go through the trigger guard just like that. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that on his left hand, which, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate considering they made a point out of him being left handed. But with all that being said, it's a fantastic figure, one that we've needed in the line for so, so long. I don't know why it's taken them so long to do it, but obviously, finally, we have him now. And let's just put that cape back on because even though the cape is soft vinyl plastic and not soft goods, he still looks absolutely awesome. So there you go then, guys. That is the Vintage Collection Director Krennic. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters and channel members for supporting the channel in the way that you do. Thank you so much. It means a great deal to me. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we shall see you on the next one.